everybody and welcome along to today's video where today I'm continuing my look through Classic Who as we reach episode or story number five of the William Hartnell era. It's The Keys of Marinus. Now this is a story that I'd never seen before. I knew literally nothing about going into it um, other than the sort of very short reminders you see on the back of the DVD but that's pretty much some of it. I'd just never really gone near this story. And actually, I really, really enjoyed this story. I think it might be my favourite story so far of the William Hartnell era. It was just... I think it felt almost ahead of its time in the sort of style of story that is and the amount of effort and that went into sort of the set design and the, the sort of ideas behind it and the whole plot. It was quite a big a big idea to really go with. Obviously, then is a bit rehashed in the key to time later on in the, in the late 70s. Um, but it really just felt like a sort of very progressive Doctor Who and very ahead of its time for 1964. So, of course, the basic premise of this story is that they, the TARDIS crew, I guess you'd call it, um, turn off a Marinus this planet somewhere, I don't really know where, and they bump inside the city, bump into this sort of important bloke who's got a big mind control machine, it's probably the best way of putting it, um, but needs to recover the keys to take the control again and um, take control of the Vord who have sort of gone rogue and are attacking this place. And so the Doctor and Co get sent off on an adventure across Marinus um, to try and retrieve these four keys to complete um, this controlling machine. And so we end up sort of having six almost completely different stories within a six parts, um, within the six episodes, where we sort of go from place to place to place to place through these six episodes. It's, it's a sort of really clever idea and a really great way of bringing sort of more scale to the story and really just giving a lot of variety to it as we sort of go from um, this kind of perfect city um, that's not really as it seems and everything's rather um, not actually there but everybody believes that everything's amazing when it's actually not in the first or in episode two then episode three we end up in this sort of jungle planet or jungle um, city um, with this mysterious castle inside it and so you get that whole sort of um, idea then you get this snowy planet uh, or not planet um, snowy sort of city we end up in or part of the planet that we end up in in episode four and then we have the court proceedings through episode five and into episode six as everything is finally wrapped up so it's really impressive to the see, see them put this much effort into sort of going to lots of different locations or not real locations but creating lots of different sets and um, really wanting to just kind of Give that, give this story that scale, and really feel like it's sort of a more uh, action adventure style story almost, as we're going on a big hunt for these four keys to try and um, comp save Marinus essentially. So I think that I just love the idea behind this story, and I do think they did a very good job in realizing it as well. All the sort of um, locations we go to, they do feel very different. Although there is some similarities, of course, with the lack of color, they some of them merge together. But you, you did still very much feel very quickly like you were in a different place each time, whether it be going from the jungle planet with all the with jungle area with all the trees and it was quite hot and then suddenly into this sort of freezing um freezing cold ice ice everywhere place um in episode four that sort of contrast i think is really effectively done um and it just sort of nicely kind of explores all these different sort of the, the natural elements but also the people behind it as well and the sort of various evil people of marinus and the different places of marinus i think is quite nice um, through this through this story, so I think that's all just really really effective. I don't know if it was just me, but it felt like this story had a bit more pace to it than maybe Marco Polo and some of the sort of previous stories had. I think it probably helped that we were in a, each location for a shorter period of time, so it was almost packing more story into an episode. Um, but it just I just felt more engaged in this story than in some of the previous ones. I felt I was really sort of interested in the story, and it was really just going along fast enough for me to be able to kind of invest in it and keep interested and not have the sort of really slow pace of it. So I was really pleased with that and it really felt like a change from what we've had so far in um, the Hartnell era. Of course, character-wise, I thought it was very well done that because in the middle of this story, William Hartnell had a two-week break, essentially two weeks holiday, so they had to basically write him out of two story, two episodes. So I thought that was a very cleverly done that they just said, oh yeah, I'm just going to pop off to the fourth location. So we have to go through the second and third without him. So we can just kind of leave him out of the story for a couple of weeks, which I thought was really nice a sort of really nice kind of way to solve a little plot issue there. Um, and then I thought later on when he comes back in, in episode five, he has sort of one of my favourite scenes in the first Doctor so far, where he, um, with Ian, with Barbara and um, Susan, kind of explains what happened in, in that room when Ian's been hit and sort of, it almost feels like he's being Sherlock Holmes almost in kind of playing it all out, explaining it all, kind of being the detective kind of thing. It felt almost a little bit like he was being Sherlock Holmes and I thought that was a really sort of brilliant layer to add to his character. He was very much a more sort of likeable character you felt in this throughout this story. He was very warm and more friendly, just more enjoyable. And I think he had some great scenes as well. So I feel 
The First Doctor's really developing very well at this stage. Of course, you had Arbitros and the other woman who, whose name I cannot remember, unfortunately, um, who were the sort of other two extra companions almost for this story, which I think kind of it benefited from when, like, for example, the Doctor sort of missed, or William Hartnell missed two episodes, it helped to have those extra sort of main cast to be able to pull the story along. And it showed really that 1960s Doctor Who, certainly early on, wasn't all about the Doctor, although the Doctor, who was the titular character, it was just as much about Barbara and Ian and Susan, and they were very much pulling through a lot of the story, and obviously they were, they, the Doctor was absent for a couple of episodes, and it just, you really felt that the Doctor and, and his companions were all on a level playing field. Although the Doctor had the knowledge, he didn't sort of have the action element to it, I think that was therefore able, they were able to, to co sort of complement themselves, the companions and the Doctor, I think. It built up a really nice relationship and isn't and sort of something that I think is kind of lost as we get a bit further through Classic Who. And to some degree in New Who, I mean it's a very different sort of dynamic now, but I think it's it was a really nice way to sort of start off the show in this way, I think. And so overall I just found this a very sort of interesting and engaging story. It was a it felt more like a proper Doctor Who story. I know I know Marco Polo was is is a pure historical, I know the Aztecs coming next is a pure historical, but I think because of the lack of pure historicals in Doctor Who since the 1960s, it kind of they feel a little bit less like a Doctor Who story, whereas in this episode, although there isn't much in the way of aliens, I mean, they're sort of humanoid aliens, these sort of people of Marinus, I believe, um, but the Vord, they were quite a sort of impressive, really weird, creepy looking uh, monster, and it was very effective in episode one as we gradually built up to being able to see them, as you just sort of saw their feet rush, rushing around, and then a bit of their torso, and then, then you sort of saw their face with a massive knife about to stab someone, and then rather comedically getting swung around the door, um, or swung into the wall, sort of going, I'm falling into the wall now. That was, I thought that was maybe more comedic than it was intended to be, but I thought it was quite effective early on. And certainly that first episode I thought was a really sort of interesting way to set it up and kind of building up this mysterious city, what quite is going on with all these weird creatures through this acid lake that's outside the big city. I thought that was all very effectively done. Even if it didn't look spectacular, I thought the sort of plot was just very well, it was a very well written story, I think, early on. And continued through it, really, as I say, just went through it quite a pace and it was something I really enjoyed. So overall, I would say this is definitely my favourite story so far of the five um, episodes that begin Classic Who, and I'm, I'm sort of, I, was, I wasn't expecting this, I had no expectations whatsoever going into this story, I just didn't know what it was going to be like, but it was nice to have a more Doctor Who-y story, at least from what I feel a Doctor Who story should be, I guess. Um, so that just made this a really enjoyable one. And so up, up next I'll be having the Aztecs to review, which is another story I've never seen before. I know that it's generally quite popular in fan opinion, I know it's a few historical, but other than that, I know literally nothing about this story, so I look forward to watching that and reviewing it in the near future. But other than that, guys, I want to hear from you. What did you think of the Keys of Marinus? Is this a, is this one of your sort of more enjoyable First Doctor stories? Do you sort of share my thoughts that it's quite a nice, ambitious story? that really feels like pure Doctor Who, or you not, not enjoy it so much. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say about it. But other than that, as usual, remember to hit that like button, subscribe if you're new here, and I'll see you again very soon from the video. Goodbye.